you're not happy with the body you see in the mirror, you're not alone. The American Society of Plastic Surgeons says there are about 2 million surgeries every year to reconstruct and contour. Breast surgery is one of the most popular, and now there's a new FDA-approved method for implants. And here with more on that is Dr. Maida Perkins from Belissa Plastic Surgery and Medispa. Belisa, right? Yes, Belisa. Right. Nice mm -hmm. to have you nice here. Nice to have Thank you. you. I think this is a great conversation. We just came out of um, Breast Cancer Awareness mm -hmm. Month. A lot of women who have had mastectomies um, need implants. A lot of other women just cosmetically desire implants. What are you kind of seeing in, in the, the surgery realm of breast augmentation surgery? Um, so in breast augmentation surgery, for a long time we've had both the saline, this is a saline filled okay, and a silicone filled um, implant. Okay. And the new one so is the one, this one. So the one I'm holding is saline here. This is saline filled. They and both have silicone shells, but silicone. this is saline filled, which is just what your body is made up of, mm -hmm. saline. And this is silicone gel filled. And the, 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 the problems in the past of leakage with silicone breast implants, has that been um, both changed, helped? Yes, back in the 70s, they actually were removed from the market. Um, there were some problems, but now they are back on the market again. They are all FDA approved. This used to be a much um, more liquidy silicone, and now I've actually cut. This is one of so this is one of the new ones, but okay. I've cut a, a so little what's, hole. So what's what's new about this one? What's what what is it that you like about this? So the the new ones are shaped, so they're shaped to be like a breast. Oh, yeah. As you, if when I hold it like this, you can tell that it kind of holds its shape, and when I lay it down, yeah, it hold holds it to its the side. shape. Like this? No, the other, like so this. you can see from the side. So you can yeah. see that it's oh, shaped like a breast. Yeah, hold it's it there while It's thinner at the top and go. it has a nice natural curve like see a that? breast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think people can see the difference there. It hangs more like this. here's the usual, mm -hmm. the other one. And the it other just... are more just like around. Yep. And see, this one is also um, silicone in the middle, but it doesn't necessarily hold that shape. Mm -hmm. So that's now, are the these all thing. technically the same, like CCs or size? Um, the yes, they're close. They were laying. Okay. These three are approximately the same size. Yes. Okay. Okay. What's the reason most people consider bra breast surgery? Um, a lot of the patients that I see. Um, they had breasts, then they had children, they got a lot of deflation, um, sagginess, and they just kind of want to feel like they used to. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to have a little cleavage. Uh, everybody's got a different reason. I mean, some people are born with almost no breast tissue and they just say, I want to feel more uh, feminine. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of different reasons that people do it. Um, but those are the main things I see. Yeah. You know, I, I've had friends who, too, that they, they, maybe they're different sizes. And so right. they want to make sure just cosmetically they don't have to do anything within their bra to make right. themselves feel confident and just look better in their right. clothes, feel yeah. more feminine, too. So the new the new one, you were just about to show us that there was a kind of a cut in one of them. And I, you were going to show us. Oh, yeah, I'll I hold that. I actually cut a big hole in it. And you can okay. see that if you squeeze it, oh, this yeah. is the silicone. And then if you let it I'll go, it, it just... Again. When, it just goes right back to where it was. So when someone comes in to have a consultation, because that's what they do, what's the importance of, of an option like this, and what do you do at the consultation? Um, so at the consultation, all of our consultations are completely free, so it's nice to just come in, low pressure, we just talk about your goals, um, you know, what you're looking for. I take some measurements because a lot of what we pick is based on your body and your measurements. I can't put something huge in someone who's tiny. Um, but this is essentially just another tool that we have. So someone who's looking for a natural shape, someone where I really want to be able to control the shape and not just augment the size, this is another tool that helps me achieve a certain look for someone. So these aren't right for everybody. Mm -hmm. These still work great in most people, but for certain people, this is really a nice additional tool that I have to work with. How do people determine or how do you help them determine what size is right mm -hmm. for them? Um, so it's partly their preference. I, you know, take into account what they want to, what size they want to be. Um, but again, it's a lot is dependent on their body. So I measure their chest wall. I measure the, you know, amount of tissue they already have in their breast, how much skin envelope is there. So someone who's already had children, that skin has been stretched in the past. And so there's a little bit more room. Someone who's 
born with almost no breasts and very little skin, I'm going to be limited by how much skin is actually there. Um, so we take into account their goals, their body. Um, we have them try on some, we have some sizers in our office that you can put in your bra and look in the mirror and see if, you know, that's what you're looking for. We, I have patients always bring me pictures of people with similar body types um, to see what their, again, what their goals are. A picture really helps me more, you know, if someone says, I want a natural look, I don't know exactly what that means in their head, but if they bring me a picture, then I know exactly what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And we have some pictures um, mm -hmm. of examples, a patient um, that, that you um, did this surgery on. So you can see in the, the before picture um, there, and we tried to be as discreet as, as possible with, with covering it Thank up. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, um, but you can see in the, the before picture and then the after picture, they're just a lot more full. Right, right. So yes, this is one of my patients. Um, she has the saline, excuse me, she has the silicone round gels. It's not one of the newer teardrop ones. Um, but she, you know, she got a good result with this. So like I said, everybody is a little bit different and um, I, I'm going to help you figure out. You don't have to come and saying, I want this or I need this. You come, we talk, it's low pressure, we figure out what's gonna be right for you. It's interesting, just I noticed in the picture how much taller she was standing. You could tell she, she there was a confidence mm -hmm. that came mm -hmm. for her with that surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, whatever your reasoning being, it's a great time to come in for a consultation. You can meet with you, obviously you're very comfortable to talk to, and you can learn more about the Lisa Plastic Surgery in Maddie Spa. They're located in Economwalk and Watertown. Findyourrealbeauty.com is the website, or call for that consultation at 920-262-4577. And just really quickly, if someone has a breast augmentation surgery, can they still get a mammogram? Mm -hmm. Yes, they still need to get their mammograms. At the appropriate time, you're still gonna go and get your mammogram. They actually have special techniques. It's called the Eklund technique, where they push the implant back and they can still capture your breast tissue. It's Great. wonderful. Thanks mm -hmm. so much, Great Doctor. Great to have you on the Thank show. You so Thank much. you so much. Appreciate it.